Warning, the renegade recruiter is not for the soft, timid, or faint-hearted. If you need permission or seek approval from your mother, spouse, mates in the pub, or anyone else for that matter, this really isn't for you. If any of what you've heard puts you off in the slightest, I advise you not to listen any further. You've been warned. Prepare yourself for the no bullshit, zero fluff. Quick, dirty, and uncensored secrets for any serious recruitment, staffing, and search business owner who wants to earn more money with less work and fewer headaches, without having to kiss ass or bend over backwards to please anyone. He's a relentless and fearless renegade who will stop at nothing to reveal the harsh, unforgiving, and brutal truth about what it really takes to succeed in this business. He's a guy people love to hate and hate to love. It's your host, Terry Edwards. The Renegade Recruiter is unleashed. Hello, hello, hello. This is Terry Edwards, Renegade Recruiter, and welcome to another episode of Renegade Recruiter Unleashed. And of course, we're joined by our co-host, Drew. Drew, are you there, buddy? I am. Terry, how are you? I'm very good indeed. Thank you, sir. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. And our, our guest today is Tim Templeton, who's business author and management consultant uh, from Loyal Connect. Tim, thank you very much for joining us today. Terry, it is my absolute pleasure to be on your show. Thank you very much indeed. So look, without further ado, let's, let's get rocking and rolling, as they say. So, I, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who says who that. Says that? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, Tim, seriously, uh, for anyone who doesn't know of you, doesn't know who you are, uh, can you give us sort of the, the brief intro to who you are and what you do now? Well, certainly, Drew, and I guess the operative is brief. So that's, uh, you know, as a public speaker, uh, that's always somewhat difficult. But I have over 20 years in management consulting. I've authored uh, four different books. Uh, my last book is now being re-released in the second edition, which is The Referral of a Lifetime. And it's the lead publication in the Ken Blanchard series, which uh, if you know who Ken is, he's, he's the fellow that uh, authored The One Minute Manager. He has over 20 million books in print and uh, just a, a super, super fellow. Uh, and what I do uh, in the referral of a lifetime and working with organizations is basically uh, understanding the power of relationships, how we put relationships first. And through that and a number of processes that comes behind that, Drew, uh, we acquire our clients, long-term clients, and through that generate referrals and lifetime relationships. Awesome. Excellent, excellent. So it's all about relationships and referrals, and I'll come into that in, in, in a bit more, a bit more detail. But Tim, for, for those that don't know, tell us a bit about, tell us think about you that not many people know about you, Tim. <laughs> well, I'll share this with you that uh, I have three uh, grown daughters, only daughters, and and anyone that knew me uh, growing up and knows me now that are my close friends, they'll just shake their head up, yes and down, and say, you know, Templeton, there is a God. Everything <laughs> equals out in the end. <laughs> but I have uh, lovely three daughters. They're, they're all uh, in their 20s. One is 30. All professionals, uh, very proud of them. And here's the thing. The, the, the original edition of the Referral of a Lifetime has uh, four... Uh, uh, key female leads, and three of them are based on my daughter's personalities. Oh wow! Excellent, excellent. I, I, by the way, I, I don't know if I told you this, but uh, but Drew's my son, and and you know Drew and I work together. And I have to say, Tim, between you and I, it's not easy at times, but I put up with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but ser but seriously, Terry, there is nothing better than that. I you know I had the opportunity. I had a business early on when my father retired. Uh, here's something that no one knows. It, in my early 20s, my father gave me his last $3,500 on the face of this planet to start my very first business. And, and then as he retired, he came to work for me. And those were five of the best years of my life in my relationship with my dad. And ultimately, he bought my business. Uh, and I took those funds and went on to purchase a factory in my late 20s. And so working with your son, what you two have going on, and any of our listeners, you get an opportunity, if you get along well enough <laughs> with your parents or with your children, what a great opportunity that is to work together. 
Yeah, it's interesting what you said there about being the best years of your life working with your dad, because that's exactly what Drew says, actually, Tim. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm still young and naive, though, so... <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> just saying. So, Tim, Tim, just... Tim, sorry, sorry, Drew, go I was going to say, just on that, I mean, you mentioned sort of the, your dad helping you start your first business there and your, your factory. Can you, can you tell us a bit more about uh, your background, your sort of your entrepreneur, your entrepreneurial journey and how you sort of came to doing what you do now? Absolutely, Drew. You know, I was getting ready to go to college. I took a cross-country bicycle trip with a very good friend of mine by the name of Mark uh, Comboy. We grew up outside of Buffalo, New York, and we, we bicycled uh, from New York to Texas together. And those rides, those 100-mile rides during the day, uh, going through the Ozarks and, and through the cornfields of Indiana, uh, the, I had more clarity on my future and what I wanted to do from those long days of riding. And I saw it perfectly. I, I wanted to move to California. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to start my own business. Uh, and I did all those things. I, I went off to school, uh, abruptly uh, dropped out because I thought I knew better. Uh, Bob, by the way, on a side note, uh, Bob Seeger, uh, the great wordsmith and rock and roll star, has a great one-liner. I wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. Still running, still running <laughs> against the wind. <laughs> but anyhow, I saw it clearly and I moved to California uh, and ultimately did start my first business. Uh, my, my parents followed uh, and that first business was a home improvement business. And we uh, sold uh, insulation and solar products to homeowners in Northern California. I was very successful in that. I brought, as I mentioned, brought my father in, built the business up, sold the business to my father and my brother-in-law, and I bought an insulation factory, a 40,000 square foot facility in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, and how I did that is I raised money, never raised money before, went to Barnes & Noble, bought a book on how to write a business plan, followed it to the T, presented a plan to my mentor, my then would-be mentor of 13 years, Paul Wong, and he funded that factory for me. And we became uh, partners uh, right through till uh, the day that he passed away. So that was the early years of, of my formation as an entrepreneur. But it's been in my, my bones and in my spirit my entire life. And so it's, it's the good stuff. Yeah, it's a great story. I've got to ask this question. Excuse my ignorance. How, what's the distance between New York and Texas then? Oh, it is a uh, little over 2,200 miles. Uh, and so it, it uh, took us almost 30 days to, to ride that. Uh, but oh. Yeah, it was good. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, you must have had a sore butt at the end of it as well. I, no, it was at the beginning of that, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> like most cyclists, I was out of shape when I started. But when you're out on the road, you get in shape very quickly. I mean, there's no choice. You burn the ships. You know, you, you, you're now moving inland and, and there's no going back. And so you get into shape on the road. <laughs> yeah, what a great experience. Great story there. And it's, um, yeah, excellent. And, and, and for people that don't know, how would you... Summarize what you do now. What's your offering to 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 clients now, Tim? Well, uh, what I have there's a couple of initiatives on this the new release of my book. Uh, I'm all about the processes. I, obviously, putting relationship first. So it doesn't matter whether you're a consultant, a coach, you're in the professional services. Uh, uh, I've worked extensively all over the world with uh, financial organizations like the Hartford uh, American Express. I've been to Africa and, and worked with uh, Alexander Forbes, the, the biggest uh, uh, financial firm on the continent of Africa. And what I have done historically and I'm doing for those professionals, people in real estate, uh, people in network marketing, it's, it's taking the simple processes of understanding the power of our relationships, building per personal and professional relationships, doing great work and ultimately educating them through the process that when you've earned the right, uh, they will refer you to others and they understand the value to them for doing it. Now, what, I, what I've done, uh, fellas, is I have teamed with a great organization that has a great software that I've had a relationship uh, for over 20 years, and that company is called Refer.com. I'm on their teaching faculty and on their advisory board, and all the promises of my book in this edition is all delivered uh, through this uh, relational uh, application that sits on top of your contact manager, it sits on top of your CRM, 
Uh, and then through my processes and that simple software, we generate referrals. So that's what I do for clients now. And we're just launching that with the launch of, uh, of my new second edition uh, next month. Awesome. Uh, just, just as a side note, Tim, do you know, uh, do you know Thomas Gay? Uh, I do, as a matter of fact. It, and Thomas Gay is, is my friend. And he is the founder of Refer.com. And so Tom yeah. is the one that has invited me on their advisory board. But I've known Tom since the 90s. Wow. Uh, I, I mentioned that uh, uh, coaching company. My partner and I originally approached Tom. He lived in San Diego at the time uh, for investment in our organization. And uh, that never happened. But I did strike up a relationship because he was connected to several people I knew extremely well here in San Diego. So we've had a... Tom and I go back uh, uh, about 20 years now. So, awesome. yes, I do know Tom. Yeah, he, he was actually on a, an earlier episode of this show. Yeah, that's great. Tom is uh, an extremely bright fellow. Uh, Tom and his partner, I mean, here's a, let me, a little bit on Tom. Of course, uh, you know, those that listen to the show is just great. But this guy uh, had built two organizations uh, and uh, hundreds of millions in exit uh, uh, um, opportunity for him and all of his shareholders. He, I don't know if he shared this with you, but you talk about culture and putting the relationship first. A couple of years ago, he had an anniversary uh, of uh, all the company employees he had 20 years prior. Now, this is 20 years prior, and over 100 of them showed up at the anniversary party. Wow. Now, wow. that is culture, man. That is relationship, and that's what Tom brings to the table, and that's why he and I are partners, because wow. I love that about him. And he's, yeah. got, he's got the uh, the the body of work to prove it. Awesome. Excellent. And, and, I mean, just thought, you, you, you keep in touch, you, you still keep in touch with him now, do you? Oh, yeah. No, as a matter of fact, I was just up at his corporate <laughs> offices last week in Boise, Idaho, and we're producing a product together, uh, and, uh, and he's one of the lead uh, uh, team members on my book launch. So, wow. yes, awesome. we're working Excellent. Together. Excellent. Small world. That yeah. is a small world, isn't it, fellas? <laughs> Very small world, but you try painting it, but that's another story. <laughs> hey, look, you, you, you've got a, a wealth of experience here, Tim, and you know, you've, you've, you've done so much. Along, along this journey that you've, that you've been on, what would you say is the biggest mistake that you've made and how, you, <laughs> well, how did you overcome it? Well, there are multiple, uh, multiple experiences. And I, and I have to tell you, I mean, I have made uh, a lot of money. I've built businesses and I've lost. I've lost everything. I've been up and down. And that's what being an entrepreneur is about. It, it, it is being able to uh, continually look forward, learn from your past, but when you get hit and, and when you get knocked down hard, like the breath is taken out of you, it's a point of gathering yourself, looking at your body of work and the things that you do and that belief of moving forward. And so I, I, I have got, I've got more failures uh, than I do successes, but I, I do want to share this with, with you and anyone listening right now. You will learn more from those failures, from those times when you get knocked. You will learn more, you'll become a better businessman, you'll become a better partner, uh, and uh, ultimately a, a better spouse at the end of the day because of it. Be and, and that's what life's about. That's what's being an, an entrepreneur about. This one thing on failure, this is interesting. I, I listened to, I don't know if you're familiar with Joe Polish uh, yeah. and uh, his organization, but uh, he had Tony Robbins on uh, for an interview. And I haven't followed Tony Robbins. Of course, the whole world knows about him. Uh, but I listened to an interview and what Tony Robbins said on failure when Polish asked him, you know, how do you handle failure? What's your process? And Robbins said, you know, I don't have a process. He said, but I do have a mindset. And I love this, what he said. And I, I wrote it down and, and it's so true. He said, I don't believe that life happens to me. I believe that life happens for me. And to that end, the people that I know and have worked, he said, I've failed hundreds of times, more than I, I want to talk about. And, and he said, and the people that I know that became extremely successful, they did as well. But they all shared this common denominator is that we look at life that it happens for us and not to us so we can move on. And uh, that that is key. I mean, those are the kind of thoughts when at the end of the day, uh, uh, you look, circumstances 
uh, ups and downs. I mean, I was in the dot-com uh, era that we had a big initiative that went forward. And I don't know if anybody was kicking around in March of 2000, but that's the, that's the month that NASDAQ almost went to zero. And if yeah. you were out doing a capital raise like I was at that time, you couldn't get arrested, let alone find an investor. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, well, that's great that's experience. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great term there. You couldn't get arrested. I love that. Absolutely love that. Jimmy just says something about Andy Robbins. Could you just, because I just love that quote. Could you, would you mind just repeating it again, please? Yes. The, here's the quote, and this is a this is a Tony Robbins quote. It's that life doesn't happen to me. Life happens for me. Yeah. And and that's the mindset. Uh, and so I, I love it. I wrote it down, and I uh, I love sharing it. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's a, I've written it down as well. It's a, there's a there's a massive lesson there. Massive lesson. There. Thank, thanks for sharing that, Tim. Yes, absolutely. Tim, uh, I mean, one of the reasons we we were so keen to get you on the show was to find out more about your book, uh, the referral of the, the book's called The Referral of a Lifetime: Never Make a Cold Call Again, uh, which is is it due for release in August? Am I right in thinking that? Yes, it's it's going to print. Uh, it'll be on the shelves and um, uh, and with worldwide release on August first. And so, um, yep, absolutely. I'm really excited about this particular edition because we've added over 25 percent uh, to the last edition. And more importantly, through what I what I did was uh, I took all of the lessons of teaching the content over a period of the past 10 years, not only updated the book and added all this new content, but I, but I also infused all of the lessons of teaching it live over the last 10 years and the nuances to uh, uh, getting to the point where, again, it's still a short read. Uh, it, it takes obviously a little bit longer. It's a couple hundred pages, but most importantly, uh, I've got specific steps. I've got all the processes on how to run a referral-based business, and literally, uh, if you follow the book, uh, you, and, and many have, you can build a 100% referral-based business uh, through the process. So it's very detailed, and it's very complete. Awesome. Excellent. So, Mark, can I put, I'm going to put you on the spot. Could, could you give us an example um, of, some of, the, uh, some of the some of the content of the book? Absolutely, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm not only going to do that, I'm going to, at the end of this program, I'm going to make a short code text, and I'm going to give your listeners, based on, and I've talked to my publisher on behalf of you and your show, uh, a text so that you can download a, a complimentary chapter and read a full chapter. And this particular one is the fifth one on setting up joint venture relationships with other businesses. So here's a tip. For all the business uh, uh, individuals out there that call in other businesses or uh, call in consumers, one of the, the most prolific source of referrals uh, is the other businesses that are connected to you, those business owners of endorsing you to their trusted client base. And, and so it's, you know, obviously, oh, well, that's what we all network for, but it's how do we network? What are the processes we do? And so by understanding, number one, that's first where the fish are at. And so how do I engage at least 10 other business owners and get them comfortable to the point that they would not only take my offer, but they would send it out to their 250, 300, 500 clients and fully endorse me to them. And so ultimately, I'm able to generate referrals from that. And so the first, the first process is really understanding of targeting those first 10. So a little coaching right now for our listeners. I want you to identify 10 businesses. They have a goal that you're going to find 10 like-minded businesses that have a client base of 250 clients or more. Uh, and, and what you're gonna do over the next 90 days is target those individuals and you're gonna meet with those individuals one on one. On one. First, learn about their business. Because as they say, guys, people don't really care about what we have until what? We, they understand how much we care about them. And so it's an idea of really learning who they are. And once they're vetted and you choose them, because it's an application process, meaning this is reciprocal referrals. Just because they have 250 clients does not mean that you want to do business with them because you have to believe in their services. You have to believe in what they do and you have to match up philosophically. And so when you do, that means not only are they going to offer a specific uh, uh, 
offer from you to their clients, you're going to do the same for them to all of your clients. And so here's the process is once this, this takes hold, uh, you have those people in play right now so you can get to them in the next four, uh, 14 days. Uh, and or if you don't, you've got the next 90 days to target those 10 businesses. And so once we learn uh, uh, about their business, what I want you number two, the second step is now craft an offer. And I'll give you an example. I'm working with uh, the Mosquito Authority here in the U.S. They have over 100 franchisees, and they're following my system. Joey Osborne's the CEO of this company, and they do a phenomenal service for homeowners in the Mosquito Belt all across the U.S. Is they do uh, a service every 21 days to make homes mosquito-free. So I'm taking them through a process right now to identify those 10 other businesses. And those 10 other businesses then through our simple platform, you can do it on your own, offers a free treatment uh, uh, from that business owner to their clients of the Mosquito Authority. Builds them up in this email that sends out. It's a great value add. People understand that they can live mosquito free, on, you know, enjoy their back porch or yard for the first time ever and, and not have some mosquito the size of a, a giant fly carry them off. Uh, and then vice versa, get ready then to offer uh, once a month that special offer of those, of those uh, JV partners to your database of clients. And so that's a process that if you think through, there's a couple of moving parts, but those businesses, if you have 10 that have 250 clients, that's 2,500 people that that referrer has a close personal relationship with. And if you give a killer offer to introduce whatever you do to them on behalf of that person, that person will get the credit. You're going to get take up. You're going to increase your appointments. And when you do, your business is going to uh, uh, rise along with it because all boats rise with the tide. You're listening to the Renegade Recruiter Unleashed podcast. For show notes, additional resources, and podcast updates, head over to www.therenegaderecruiter.com. Does that make sense? Perfect. Yeah, it, it makes perfect sense. In fact, it sounds sort of really simple, and I think anyone listening to that sort of agree that, um, in theory, it all it all sort of makes sense. But why? Why doesn't this happen often enough? What? Why, where do people? <laughs> I love it. That is the question. Here's the thing, guys. I mean, this is, you know, Asmanoff, you know, the great inventor, he said, you know, it's not the eureka that really blows people away. It's when looking at something and, and, the, and the term comes out, hmm, that's interesting. That's where all the great discoveries are. Here's the point, fellas. We, we go, it's called gravity. It's called working downhill. And, and it's the simple things. While it's simple in nature, and I point this out, obviously, in my book, or my main character, Susie, does, it sounds so simple. But there are levels of complexity on it. I mean, we're all looking for a referral right now. Look, everybody in the world, you, me, all of us, we want to wake up today and we want a pre-endorsed, uh, a qualified referral sitting in our inbox. So, yeah. And we want them to call us. We don't even want to call it. I mean, yeah. that's what we all want, but there's a process on how we go through, put relationships first. And in this case, I'm talking about the relationships with those 10 other business owners. And so this is, a, this is somewhat of a process. It's, it's multi-step, and you just have to ultimately decide that this is important for you to follow those processes. And uh, to answer it, yes, it's simple on the top, but it, like an iceberg, there are a number of, of steps below the water line that you have to follow through on. And when you do, there's there's absolute gold there. Absolute gold. That's fantastic. Jim, on that, I'm really fascinated by this. So I just want to ask you a few more questions about this. For a business like ours, where we've got um, our potential JVs are all over the world, we, we would never physically meet them because they are literally all over the world. Would this technique work with those guys as well? Uh, yes, it will. Let me talk a little bit about my friend Tom and what we're releasing uh, together. These processes, uh, because Tom and I are so closely aligned, uh, we are releasing through Refer.com the first uh, referral network in the world that's cloud-based, whereby you can build your referral team uh, locally, regionally, uh, or nationally, or in your, 
her case, internationally, because ultimately, and if you have the, the so number one, uh, it's it's a referral team, and this fifth chapter that I'm going to make available to you and all of your constituents will will lay this out and how it's presented uh, through uh, my character uh, in that book uh, at at the time. So this chapter five will lay this out, but ultimately, it's an online opportunity that tracks all of our reciprocal referrals. So, for instance, fellows, if you if we decide we're going to be partners and you're inside my referral directory, you become one of 10 or 15 organizations that I'm working with internationally that ultimately uh, uh, I believe in you and can refer you and you believe in me can do the same thing. We can do this all in the cloud together. And so when you take basically my referral uh, uh, profile that talks about my testimonials and my background and things I do, that's a matter of that. Now you simply sending that out to the, your constituents around the world and along with my uh, value add offer. Likewise, then I would agree to do the same for you for a period of time, but this is all in the cloud. And it's based on what technology is today. That's why this is so exciting. That's what gets me up in the morning every day is the ability for the technology to reach the world with the message. So, yes, I, I hope I got you fired up on that. Absolutely. It's absolutely I, I, I want to say, look, Tim, thank you very much for that very kind offer of that free chapter. I can't wait to get that. I'm, you know, and, and Drew and I are big into JV. So, yeah, Drew and I will, will be looking at this and looking to implement it ASAP. So thank you very much for the, for the generous offer to, to all the listeners as well. That's fantastic and very kind Super. of you. Super. Yeah, also, I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating. Tom, Tim, sorry, can you give us uh, an example of, it in your current business or in, in past businesses that, you, that you've sort of built up, how referrals and, and, and JVs helped you? Sure. I mean, absolutely. I mean, let me, let me give you an example of probably the, the, the referral of a lifetime that I received was uh, uh, the referral to Ken Blanchard. Uh, Ken Blanchard, uh, next to Peter Drucker and Deming, is probably one of the three top leaders in the world over the last century. Uh, Ken is in his 70s now. He's been all over the world. He has over 20 million uh, books in print. The Ken Blanchard companies uh, and their trainers are a worldwide organization. Uh, and uh, I had a friend that knew Tom K, by the way, we were connected. His name was Vince Siciliano. Vince uh, was a local banker in San Diego. We were in a number of uh, groups together. We became friendly. Uh, we were in a mastermind group once a month. And so Vince and I became close friends. I did some talks for his bank and locally. Uh, uh, he sponsored me uh, uh, to a number of regional events. And Vince was always a big supporter of mine and my work. Anyhow, Vince had a close personal relationship with Ken Blanchard. And as a young author starting out, I was young at the time, as a young <laughs> author starting out, uh, I, of course, wanted to connect with Ken Blanchard. But that was only uh, a dream at that point. That was only a goal. And so, as a matter of fact, I talked to a number of, of other authors because I wanted Ken to write a foreword, and could that happen? Could they introduce me? And I, the doors were closed uh, left and right for that. Well, anyhow, uh, Vince knew Ken well. And Vince brought my book, the first edition of The Referral of a Lifetime, presented it to Ken and said, you really need to read this. And so, one day, um, I'm in my office, and my secretary at the time, my admin, uh, uh, came into my office and she said, you're never going to guess who's on the telephone. She whispered, he was on hold. It's Ken Blanchard. I said, oh, wow, are you serious? I mean, my heart started pounding. Wow, <laughs> yeah. And so, of course, I, I, you know, I quickly try to compose myself in my most professional voice <laughs> and confidence. You know, I said hello and I said, Tim, Ken Blanchard here, how are you doing? I said, hey, Ken, I'm doing great. He said, now we both live in San Diego. He said, I just read your book, and I think it's marvelous. He said, what are you doing tomorrow morning? Well, guys, I'll tell you, whatever I had planned the next day, that got canceled or wasn't happening. I'm wide open, Ken. <laughs> so he said, great, come on down to the RBN, uh, great little resort uh, close to our homes, and let's have breakfast and talk about what we can do uh, with your book and this great message. And so we met. He made a deal that if I would come in and coach his executives on the principles of the book, he'd see that I got larger uh, worldwide distribution. And he did. And through Barry Kohler, he brought me into his, 
His one of his publishers made a great introduction. He's now been my publisher for 20 years, uh, and ultimately, uh, not only did the forward, but Ken the Ken Blanchard companies owns half the copyright. They they both they basically partnered with me on the book and made the book the first uh, book in the in the Ken Blanchard series. So Ken, because of that referral, because of Vince Siciliano, because of talking about it and him being proactive and bringing my book to Ken, I was referred to Ken. Now that's for me, and, and that has opened up doors around the world for me. I mean, I, absolutely around the world, all because of Ken Blanchard. Now here's the thing, I, I've got my referral of a lifetime through that, but you know what, Drew and Terry and, and all the listeners, you all have your Ken Blanchard sitting out there. They are waiting for you to deliver great work, put the relationship first, like I always did with Vince, and those individuals are ready to take your offer to your version of Ken Blanchard that will open up the doors for you worldwide. It's just a process in this philosophy of putting relationships first, incorporating it into our business, uh, and moving through time and space like that. Now, here's the thing, guys. That's easier said than done because that's not how we're all wired, right? Mm. We're all wired about what's in it for us. Yeah, and and it's it's a it's a process we need to start with each day about thinking of the needs of others, and uh, and we need to wake up and actually think about how we're going to do that each day because we're not wired that way, uh, and that's the process inside my writing and my work and and what I coach on. Okay. Yeah, you know, you, you, several times at the very beginning, Tim, the, the thing that comes across very strongly, with you, you know, you talk about relationships, and it's it's almost every other word in in your in your conversation, and it's really it's great to hear. Um, how passionate you feel feel about relationships. And I, I think it'd be interesting your opinion. I think a lot of people kind of forget that sometimes, don't they? Business, some business owners can forget the importance of the relationship. Terry, we all do. You yeah. know, I am uh, as as Paul, the Apostle Paul, talks in the Bible. I am the chief of sinners. I mean, all of us do that, where we we start putting the dollar signs on our foreheads. And, and we walk in and because we all have responsibilities, we all have our own goals, our own dreams. And so every day we all get up and but when we put the dollar signs on our forehead and we start talking to people about what our need is and what they can do for me, that telegraphs out to everyone. And, and so this idea of really going down this path to work at it. Uh, to build relationships, understanding when you really target those. And inside my book, I talk about the perfect client avatar. I shared who uh, in advance as we start out, who's my perfect client. You know, I have Joey Osborne, who's a CEO of a of over a franchisor with a hundred franchisees. He has big influence, and and that's the type of individual I serve best. That I can get to many through one individual. But I first approached Joey on what I could do for him. And, and just like that, if we have one thing we can encourage one another and everyone listening are selecting those people that you can take your services and help them get to where they want to go. And as they do that, they're going to come back and ask you if you'd like a ride on their train to take you where you want to go. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And so that's the, that's the process that comes behind it. But it's, it's a little unnatural starting out because we're not wired that way. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic, that is, Tim. Thank you for that. Yep. Tim, uh, apart from referrals, which we, we talk about quite a lot, and, and JVs, what do you do to grow your business? What What's working for you at the moment? Uh, here's here's where I came. I, I was uh, in the early 2000s, and so I did a lot of speaking on stage. Uh, I, listen, guys, I am so taken with technology. Uh, and in 2008, uh, Google changed uh, the world when they bought YouTube for a billion, 600 million. We are in such a tremendous time, all of us, everyone listening right now, we have a window of time where we can communicate our messages with the world for free. Now, I said the word free. We here, Look at us. I'm looking. Yeah, we were on video earlier together. We're on two different continents, and we're speaking real time uh, together with listeners now listening to this on other continents that we're sharing information, life stories, and possibly some business opportunities. We are in an extraordinary period of time. When I first started out, back when I think Moses was walking the world, <laughs> the, 
you know, we didn't have any of this. I mean, when I wanted to go out and teach, I had to go rent a hotel room. I had to go across the country. I had to have phone people to fill the room and then stand on stage and share this story. And if people wanted to get involved, they had to come out to the hotel. Out Now, because of technology and video, uh, you know, I am in my home office uh, in San Diego uh, in my shorts getting ready to go out and enjoy the sunshine after this call <laughs> and and share great information. And so what I'm passionate about, what I'm doing right now, is my the next 10 years of my life is all on video. I'll still do some keynotes uh, where it's appropriate, but I'm sharing my message uh, in my coaching all via video so that it can be captured on smartphone, uh, uh, on, on a laptop, and to the world for free. I mean, this, these airlines, let me just give you a juxtapose that against. In the 1980s, I, I skipped a part of my history. I, I had a, um, after the factory, I had a company that if you wanted your product on Walmart or Kmart shelves, I had a national rep organization, relationships with all the major buyers, that I could have your product in front of those buyers in 30 days and get a yes or a no out of them. And, and so what happened was one of the products I had, this was at the time Nintendo and Sega of America were launching. I represented a number of those companies. I was in the middle of all that. One of the product lines I had was an NFL product. It was an NFL a board game. And we had Monday night football advertising every game for the entire season. Now, do you know how much Monday night football advertising costs for every game for the entire season? I mean, in those dollars, I mean, it was well over seven figures that was invested for that. And we reached the country through that. And we had a phenomenal product launch whereby uh, the executive VP of Toys R Us came into my uh, office at the toy building in February of 87, Ron Tuckman, to congratulate me on the profitability Toys R Us made off of our product launch and thank me. That was because of the gazillions of dollars we spent on television. We're doing the same thing together for free. Yeah. We are in an extraordinary period of time. Anybody listening right now, hello, wake up. If you think you missed the boat, the boat hasn't left yet. The train is in the station. Get your stuff together, understand the technology, and get ready to get on a rocket ship and go for a ride. Hey, one of the best books and one of the best comments I've read, obviously I have three daughters, was Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In, right? And Mike Schmidt, who is the CEO at the time of Google, was when uh, Sheryl Landsberg first interviewed. She worked for Google before taking over as number two at Facebook, right? And yeah. so in the book, she talks about meeting Mike and getting offered the job of head of business development for Google. And she looked at him and knew him prior when he was lobbying in D.C. and when she lived on the, on the East Coast. And she said, gee, I had all my, my nauseating MBA uh, notes out about the, you know, the pluses and minuses of each offer. And I showed it to Mike. And this was a great part in the book. And I showed him my, my little list that I had some other offers. And Google didn't even have a business development department at that time. He said, and then Mike gave me the best business advice I ever received in my life. He leaned over. He put his hand on my little piece of paper and moved it aside, looked me in the eyes and said, Cheryl, don't be an idiot. When someone offers you a seat on a rocket ship, take it. Doesn't matter what seat it is, take it. Friends, we are getting on board a rocket ship of free video for our messages, free medium of, and media throughout the world. Take yeah. advantage of it like we are taking advantage of it right now. Wow. Okay, I'm getting off the soapbox and the story. Uh, I'm just a little passionate about it. Yeah, listen, Tim, your passion and, and belief, it's, it's, it's contagious. It's yeah. absolutely fantastic. So please... Don't apologize. That's absolutely <laughs> fantastic and, and so true as well. Again, thank you, Tim. That's, that's been fantastic. Tim, there's so many questions and we're running out of time. Look, I, I know people listening to this are going to be really infused and want to know to learn more about you, Tim. How can people reach out to you? Well, here's the thing. Let me do this first. I'm going to give you a short text because I'll capture uh, your, your uh, contact information if you're interested in it and you'll have mine through it. I'm going to give you a short text code can be used anywhere in the world. And the text code is this, if you text this message 
and it's 5885. That is the short code text. And in the body of the text, simply type in RL, that's referral lifetime, RL, and the number five, and hit send. That will come to me, and we'll, you'll follow the prompts with your email, and I'll send you my, the free complimentary copy of the referral of a lifetime, the fifth chapter, RL5, and we'll be able to connect uh, through that. Uh, so that's, that's one way, and I'd love to be able to do that as we go through the process. But uh, any other way, uh, anybody's interested, they can always go and send me an email uh, via my website at Tim at consultinggold.com. But uh, either way, those are both paths, but I'd love for you to have a uh, copy of my uh, uh, new chapter uh, in, on the fifth chapter. Great. And I, I see that you're also on, on LinkedIn. Is it okay for, for people to connect with you on LinkedIn? A absolutely. Absolutely. Say just, to <laughs> just notify yourself when you do that it came through you, uh, that it came through your podcast so I know who you are. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I'm, here's me asking if it's okay and I'm <laughs> telling the whole world that you're on LinkedIn, they're asking you. It's the wrong way around, really. <laughs> but yeah, seriously. Tim, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much indeed. Fantastic. Yes, Drew. Good stuff. Awesome. Tim, yeah, again, been really good having you on the show. Um, yeah, thanks for taking the time out of your day to share your story, share your experiences, and, and yes, yeah, share your message with the with our audience. Yeah, good stuff. Well, I'm glad to be here and just an encouragement to everyone. Hey, you know, this is the, the first day of the rest of our lives. Let's go get them. You know, okay. the sun is out there and uh, the time is right. So we're in an extraordinary period of time. It's great being on, on your show, fellas, and uh, really look forward to staying connected with both of you and uh, building our personal and professional relationship as we go forward. Brilliant. Fantastic. Again, I want to really re endorse what Drew said there. And again, thanks for your enthusiasm. Thanks for that very generous offer of the ch free chapter of your book as well. And yeah, and, and just your general, general generosity um, and passion. It's, yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Tim, for sharing. Good stuff. It's all my pleasure. Hi, this is Terry Edwards, Renegade Recruiter. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, take care, take action, and be relentless.